ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम ज्ञान तमिरांद से ज्ञानांजन शाला के आज शुरू नहीं तमिल में तस्माय श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मुनि विष्टम स्थापित है मेरा बहुत अलेस वाइम रूपा के दमन के दधा तीसवां प्रधानति कंपन्दी हम श्री गुरु श्री उदापर कमलम श्री गुरु नेश्वरम सैन श्री रूपम सागर धातम शायकर रघुनाथ आमी तम तम से जी हम साध भई तम साबुदो तम परिजन सही तम कृष्ण चैतन्य देव हम श्री राधा कृष्ण बादान साहगनादुलिता � प्रणामी हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पत कृपा सिंधु पतिताेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद शिवसरोवर भक्त वृंद की जय हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओके हरे कृष्णा सो टूडे भक्ति शास्त्री वी विल गेट इन टू ईशो निषित I will just uh, how um, how the issue of is divided into like majorly six lessons. Uh, we will try to complete in uh, three classes or three weekends, like Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. So that at least by February, if you are able to finish issue Upanishad, then I think we are good to go by March. Okay. So lesson one will talk about introduction, followed by um, the invocation prayer, which is very important. Um, the Purnamada Sloka. Then uh, lesson three to six is all about um, how do we understand Krishna? How do we understand the Supreme Lord, Supreme Person of God, Godhead as um, from an uh, understanding perspective? Okay. So we'll get into lesson one focusing on the, you know, uh, on the introduction. If possible, we'll get into invocation to it. So... Um, First, I will let um, first I will let you do, just read through uh, the introduction. Then you will just quickly read through. Uh, and mostly, uh, the the understanding of um, uh, the Prabhupada's writing will be most easily understood. So we will uh, we'll go through para by para, and then uh, and then just try to summarize certain portions. So anybody can start reading para by para, one para each of you, and then we can have a logical conclusion and then discuss on that. Hmm? Okay. Anybody can start quickly. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. I'll just start. Introduction, teachings of the Vedas. Krishna. Ladies and gentlemen, today's subject matter is the teaching of the Vedas. What are the Vedas? The Sanskrit verb root of the Veda can be interpreted variously. By the purport in is finally one. Veda means knowledge. Any knowledge you accept in Veda or the teaching of the Vedas are the original knowledge. In the conditioned state, our knowledge is subject to many deficiencies. The difference between a conditioned soul and a liberated soul is that the conditioned soul has four kinds of defects. The first defect is that he must commit mistake. For example, in our country, Mahatma Gandhi was considered to be a very great personality, but he committed many mistakes. Even at the last stage of his life, his assassin warned Mahatma Gandhi, don't go to the New Delhi meeting. I have some friends and I have heard there is danger, but he did not hear. He persisted in going and was killed. Even great personality like Mahatma Gandhi, President Kennedy, they were there are so many of them may make mistakes. To err is human. This is one defect of the conditioned soul. Another defect to be illusion. Illusion means to accept something which is not. Maya. Maya means what is not. Everyone is accepting the body as the self. And if I are uh, sorry, uh, if I ask you what you are, you will say, I am Mr. John, I am rich man, I am this, I am that. All these are bodily identification, but you are not this body, this is illusion. The third defect is the cheating propensity. Everyone has the propensity to cheat others. Although a person is fool, number one, he poses himself as very intelligent. 
although it is already pointed out that he is in illusion and makes mistake he will theorize i think this is this this is this but he does not even know his own position he write books of philosophy although he is effective this is his disease this is cheating lastly our senses are imperfect we are very proud of our eyes often someone will challenge can you show me god but do you have eyes to see it's god you will never see if you haven't the eyes if immediately the room becomes dark you cannot even see your hand so what power do you have to see we cannot therefore expect knowledge veda in these imperfect sense with all the deficiencies in conditioned life we cannot give perfect knowledge to anyone nor are we ourselves perfect therefore we accept the vedas as they are okay very good thank you bro so so what is that initial introduction proper is trying to give vedas means knowledge so knowledge um, uh, for, for for the knowledge it is original knowledge and um, we may not be able to understand uh, whatever um, knowledge that we are trying to get because we are conditioned and we knowledge whatever we are trying to get may not be 100% it might have some deficiencies so whatever which somebody says this is this perfect yeah it is not that much uh, way of seeing perfect but still because we are all conditioned we have this four kind of defects we still accept whatever is available as perfect so that that is why prabhat uh, makes it very clear how um, it is not about how much perfect it is it is about how much we accept that perfection okay so uh, because this, this this world is conditioned with four uh, kali yuga the, the four uh, uh, mistakes that is already there four kind of uh, defects that is already there so we need to uh, take it as it is so we cannot be going on and saying what is this what is that so that is why this first section is all talking about um, about the four defects so the four defects we all know propensity to commit mistakes uh, being in illusion cheating propensity and uh, senses imperfect so these these things i think we all know like you know we know how how what is meant by that um, understanding right so i think this is this is all clear so we accept vedas as they are okay so this is where very very clearly uh, Prabhupada mentioned this as they are or as it is. Like we don't want to get into um, a different understanding and say this, that, and all. It is, it is like whatever be it, we just accept as it is. Okay, so that is what the uh, first understanding. So Vedas means uh, that Vedas means knowledge, and that knowledge uh, we hear through Shabda Pramana. We hear through uh, authentic sources, and we accept that as knowledge. Okay. Because uh, how perfect it is, it is not that may, it may not be perfect, but however, we accept it through whatever sources it is. Okay. This, this line is very nice. You may call Vedas Hindu, but Hindu is a foreign. Nowadays, now only this Sanatan Dharma, after um, after Modi came, after uh, this Ayodhya, this one and all, lot of uh, lot of uh, Chai Pe Charcha, Hindu, Hindu, Hindu. So Prabhupada told this even 50, 60 years ago itself, we are not Hindu. Our real Dharma is through Sanatan Dharma. Our real identification is to Varnashrama through uh, Sanatana Dharma, right? Okay, let's quickly read this para. Yeah, please, somebody. You may call the Vedas Hindu, but Hindus is a foreign name. We are not Hindus. Our real identification is Varnashrama. Varnashrama denotes the followers of the Vedas, those who accept the human society in eight divisions of Varna and Ashrama. There are four divisions of society and four divisions of spiritual life. This is called Varnashrama. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. These divisions are everywhere because they are created by God. The divisions of society are Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Brahmana refers to very intelligent class of men, those who know what is Brahman. Brahman. Similarly, the Kshatriyas, the administrator group, are the text, are the next intelligent class of men. Then the Vaishyas, the mercantile group, the natural class, these natural classifications are found everywhere. This is the Vedic principle, and we accept it. Vedic principles are accepted as axiomatic truth for sorry uh, <laughs> these fonts are very small for me sorry um 
thank you prabhu ji okay these divisions are everywhere come here sorry prabhu ji these divisions are everywhere because they are created by god the divisions of nahi wo to pad liya tha maine for instance in india cow dung is accepted as pure and yet cow dung is the stool of an animal in one place you will find the vedic injunction that if you touch stool sorry prabhu ji kahan gaya ha you have to take bath immediately but in another place it is said that the stool of a cow is pure if you smear cow dung in an impure place that place becomes pure with our ordinary sense we can argue this is contradictory actually it is contradictory from the ordinary point of view but it is not false it is fact in calcutta a very prominent scientist and doctor analyzed cow dung and found it con- found it contains all san- antiseptic properties thank you mathi so very nice uh, very nice very practical way of propad bringing it out uh, about the four varnashramas and uh, we are all following the varnashram dharma or daivi varnashram dharma uh, and we follow sanatan dharma okay so propad in the introduction of bhagavad gita also mentions about sanatan dharma and uh, mentions it that we all follow sanatan dharma because that was given by krishna himself the chaturvaryam maya srishtam guna karma vibhaga so it was given by krishna himself directly and uh, the second point is about acceptance so natural classifications are always there so it is not that why there is a division why there is a differentiation why it is big no it is all natural one there is nothing to be uh, um, taken in a wrong perspective and this is basic principle and we have to accept it that's all okay so the, the other point uh, axiomatic which means like you know in certain places it might look uh, totally uh, opposite or totally in a, in a wrong perspective but actually that is true like what that, that example is what this stool example that right? no very nice right cow's urine and cow's stool is considered very pure but uh, in a normal circumstances we see from a, a typical perspective it is completely um, not good right so that is what probar is mentioning so it's not false it's a fact Okay. so we don't see it. this is a, this is a contradictory and we don't argue with it also so that is what is more important okay okay next quickly um, in india if one person tells another you must do this the other per- party may say what do you mean is this a vedic injunction that i have to follow you without any argument vedic injunctions cannot be interpreted but ultimately if you carefully study why these injunctions are there you will find that they are all correct the vedas are not compilations of human knowledge vedic knowledge comes from the spiritual world from lord krishna another name for the vedas is shruti shruti refers to that knowledge which is acquired by hearing it is not experimental knowledge shruti is considered to be like a mother we take so much knowledge from our mother for example if you want to know who your father is who can answer you your mother if the mother says here is your father you have to accept it it is not possible to experiment to find out whether he is your father similarly if you want to know something beyond your experience beyond your experimental knowledge beyond the activities of the senses then you have to accept the vedas there is no question of experimenting it has already been experimented it is already settled the version of the mother for instance has to be accepted as truth there is no other way thank you mother. so very nice right shruti and then uh, shruti shruti the shuddhi pramanam right the pramanam by which we accept through the cross of hearing and they not compiled by human knowledge so all the vedas uh, the upanishads whatever is being brought out is all through uh, from a spiritual descendants it's not that it is somebody doing it here and there's no question of experiment why it is like so in the previous paragraph you mentioned if you read through the injections very thoroughly you will find that they are all correct so nothing is wrong in in the in in, in the vedic injections any word any line anything mentioned in vedas including upanishads including puranas whatever we did is all true nothing but true okay good nice thank you yeah okay let's see shall i read prabhu ji yes at this point the vedas are considered to be the mother and brahma is called the grandfather the forefather because he was the first to be instructed in the vedic knowledge in the beginning the first living creature was brahma he received this vedic knowledge and imparted it to narada and other disciples and sons and they also distributed it to their disciples 
In this way, the Vedic knowledge comes down by disciplic succession. It's also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that Vedic knowledge is understood in this way. If you make experimental endeavor, you come to the same conclusion. But just to save time, you should accept. If you want to know who your father is and if you accept your mother as the authority, then whatever she says can be accepted without argument. Uh, there are three kinds of evidence, Prateksha, Anumana and Shabda. Prateksha means direct evidence. Direct evidence is not very good because our senses are not perfect. We are seeing the sun daily and it appears to us just like a small disk, but it's actually far, far larger than many planets. Of what value is this thing? Therefore, we have to read books, then we can understand about the sun. So direct experience is not perfect. Then there is Anumana, indicative inductive knowledge. It may be like this hypothesis. For instance, Darwin's theory says that maybe like this, it may be like that. But that's not science. That's a suggestion and it's also not perfect. But if you have to receive knowledge from the authoritative sources, that's perfect. If you receive a program guide from the radio station authorities, you accept it. You don't deny it. You don't have to make an experiment because it is received from the authoritative sources. Vedic knowledge is called Shabda Pram Pramana. Another name is Shruti. Shruti means that this knowledge has been received simply by oral reception. The Vedic Vedas instruct that in order to understand transcendental knowledge, we have to hear from the authority. Transcendental knowledge is the knowledge from beyond this universe. Within this universe is material knowledge and beyond this universe is transcendental knowledge. We cannot even go to the end of the universe. So how can we go to the spiritual world? Thus, to acquire full knowledge is impossible. Okay. Thanks, Mataji. So, uh, uh, if somebody is trying to get full knowledge, it is, it is near to impossibility. Or it is near or it is completely impossible. Okay. And this is kind of a refresher. So, what is meant by Shabda Pramana, Anumana Pramana and Prateksha Pramana? We are not. So, Prateksha Pramana, we cannot accept because whatever we see may not be really, really true. Right. And, uh, and Anumana Pramana, we all know. It may be like this or it may be like that. So, it is on only Anumana. It may be then may be correct. So, you know, so, so Shabda Pramana is more perfect because we accept it and we don't waste time on it because instead of wasting time when you accept it as it is, then it is much more easier. Okay. Yeah, he's talking about Shabda, Darwin's theory. He's talking about all the other. Sun also, very nice, right? So when you when you want to really uh, understand sun's uh, orbit, sun's glory, sun's entire diameter, sun's uh, so much of this one, we have to read through the Shabda Pramana. The moment you say, okay, let me go to the sun planet, let me try to do this one, it is all foolishness and we end up somewhere totally in a different situation. Right? So, nice, nice point. Okay, okay. let's keep going. Yeah. Any doubt? Any? I think this is all clear. This is all kind of refresher for you. Whatever introductions we have seen. So, yeah. we'll keep going. Can somebody read this one? There is a spiritual sky. Sure, Babu. There is. Yeah. Go for it, one. Hare Krishna, Babu. Would you like to read? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. There is a spiritual sky. There is another nature which is beyond manifestation and non-manifestation. But how will you know that there is a sky where the planets and inhabitants are eternal? All this knowledge is there, but how will you make experiments? It is not possible. Therefore, you have to take the assistance of the Vedas. This is called Vedic knowledge. In our Krishna consciousness movement, we are accepting knowledge from the highest authority, Krishna. Krishna is accepted as the highest authority by all classes of men. I am speaking first of the two classes of transcendentalists. One class of transcendentalists is called impersonalistic, Mayavadi. They are generally known as Vedantists, led by Sankaracharya. And there is another class of transcendentalists called Vaishnavas, like Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, Vishnu Swami. Both the Sankara Sampradaya and the Vaishnava Sampradaya have accepted Krishna as a supreme personality of Godhead. Sankaracharya is supposed to be an impersonalist who preached impersonalism, impersonal Brahman. But it is a fact that he is a covered personalist. In his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, he wrote, Narayana, the supreme personality of Godhead, is is beyond the cosmic is beyond these cosmic manifestations. And then again he confirmed that Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayana is Krishna. He has come as the son of Devaki and Vasudeva and Vasudeva. 
He particularly mentioned the names of his father and mother. So Krishna is accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead by all transcendentalists. There is no doubt about it. Our source of knowledge in Krishna consciousness is the Bhagavad Gita, which comes directly from Krishna. We have published Bhagavad Gita as it is because, because we accept Krishna as he is speaking without any interpretation. That is Vedic knowledge. Since the Vedic knowledge is pure, we accept it. Whatever Krishna says, we accept. This is Krishna consciousness. That saves much time. If you accept the right authority or source of knowledge, then you save much time. For example, there are two systems of knowledge in the material world, inductive and deductive. From deductive, you accept that man is mortal. Your father says man is mortal. Your sister says man is mortal. Everyone says man is mortal, but you do not experiment. You accept it as a fact that man is mortal. If you want to research to find out whether man is mortal, we have to study each and every man. And you may come to think that maybe some man who is not dying, but you have not seen him yet. So in this way, your research will never be finished. In Sanskrit, this process is called Aroha, the ascending process. If you want to attain knowledge by any personal endeavor, by exercising your imperfect senses, you will never come to the right conclusions. That is not possible. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you. Very clear, right? So, so this is, uh, Prabhupada is giving the emphasis on laying the foundation of accepting the Upanishads, accepting the Vedas, accepting whatever the transcendental literature, literature given by uh, authorities, given by our Sampradaya, right from Krishna. So, why he is emphasizing these things? Because this this is a Jivatma in a bonded stage, because it is in a, in a particular uh, uh, mode, it may not accept or it will definitely not accept what is being given to us. So, that is why Prabhupada is quoting all these points and bringing out, making very clear, please accept it and don't waste time. Okay. If you waste time, then it will take more and more uh, years and more, maybe, maybe many, many births also. So don't uh, uh, waste time. Just accept the right authority, source of knowledge and get go. So inducing one deductive also be clear. Arohanam, Avrohanam. So in, even in, in music also, there's called like Arohanam, Avrohanam. Arohanam is ascending, Avrohanam is um, descending. Let's keep going. Any doubt, any point, you can just bring it up. Okay. Otherwise, we can keep going. I'm here. Okay. Ananta, you want to read the book? So there's a statement in the Brahma Samhita, just ride on the airplane which runs at the speed of mind. Our material airplanes can run 2,000 2, miles per hour. But what is the speed of mind? You are sitting at home, you immediately think of India, say 10,000 miles away, and at once it is in your home. Your mind has gone there. The mind speed is so swift. Therefore, it is stated, if you travel at this speed for millions of years, you will find that spiritual sky is unlimited. It is not possible even to approach it. Therefore, the Vedic injunctions is that one must approach the word Compulsory is used. A bona, a bona fide spiritual master or guru. And what is the qualification of a spiritual master? He is one who has rightly heard the Vedic message from the right source. And he must practically be firmly established in Brahman. There are two qualities he must have. Otherwise, he is not bona fide. Okay, so what are the two qualities? He okay. must have heard from the right source. Okay. Firmly established in Brahman. Correct. So two sources, is, two qualities is you should really be very clear in what uh -huh. is understanding. Uh -huh. Brahman the Prabhu. Mute. Okay. Sorry, Prabhu. Okay. Okay. So he must be practically uh, very established in Brahman and he comes from the bona fide uh, spiritual path. Okay. So nice. This is also the mind. Uh, this is also a very nice uh, analogy. Like you think about something and then you are already there. No, so we always uh, have that feeling. So mind is much more faster than anything else that we can even imagine. Nice. Okay. Yeah, this section talks about Krishna consciousness. Okay. Okay. This Krishna consciousness movement is completely authorized from Vedic principles. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, 
the actual aim of Vedic research is to find out Krishna. In the Brahma Samhita, it is also stated, Krishna Govinda has innumerable forms, but they are all one. They are not like ours, which are fallible. His form is infallible. My form has a beginning, but his form has no beginning. It is Ananta. And his form, so many multi-forms, has no end. My form is sitting here and not in my apartment. You are sitting there and not in your apartment, but Krishna can be everywhere at one time. He can sit down in Goloka Vrindavana and at the same time, he is everywhere, all pervading. He is original, the oldest, but whenever you look at a picture of Krishna, you will find a young boy, 15 or 20 years old. You will never find an old man. You have seen pictures of Krishna as a charioteer from the Bhagavad Gita. At that time, he was not less than 100 years old. He had great grandchildren, but he looked just like a boy. Krishna, God, never becomes old. That is his superpower. And if you want to search out Krishna by studying the Vedic literature, then you will be baffled. It may be possible, but it is very difficult. But you can very easily learn about him from his devotees. His devotees can deliver him to you. Here he is, take him. That is the potency of Krishna's devotees. Thank you, Prabhu. So what is the Sanskrit word for the infallible? Achyuta. 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 Ananta. Ananta means, Ananta, you have to answer. Okay. Ananta means, he doesn't have any uh, one sort of form. Yes. Ananta means? Infinite forms. Infinite. Unlimited. Yes. Okay. Very nice. This uh, paragraph itself is uh, very easily understood. And then Robot is making Krishna. So this, this this section is all about Krishna, glorifying Krishna and bringing out the importance from. So previous sections all talking about Veda, accepting the Vedas, accepting the knowledge, accepting knowledge through the uh, bona fide spiritual master. So from th this section onwards, what is that we have to accept is acceptance of Krishna. So one is acceptance of Veda. How to accept Veda is through Acharyas. Now what is to accept uh, Veda? What is what in Veda? What is uh, to be accepted is the supreme person, is the is the knowledge, is the knowledge about the supreme Lord. Okay, so in that way, uh, Krishna conscious movement. So he's bringing out Krishna conscious movement into the picture, and how to do it is also being mentioned. Very nice. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Oh, yes, Prabhu. Go ahead. Okay, Prabhu, you go ahead. Prabhu, one question. Mm. So when here it talks about Krishna's multi-forms and they can exist uh, at uh, the simultaneously in different times, right? But this sort of potency and power can, can demigods also have, right? So with this definition, some people can be confused. Yeah, yeah. So demigods can also have it, but not like Krishna. So that is one point. It is not, uh, it is not that... Um, um, all the demigods will have uh, all kind of powers. So demigods will have some limited power. One demigod can do this, but the other demigod cannot do. But Krishna can do anything and everything. Mm. That is first way of understanding. Second way of understanding is, for example, one demigod can increase his form, but he may not be able to do other thing. Uh, similarly, that way. So this is one understanding. Second understanding is the, the goal of um, uh, the Vedic principle is to understand that supreme person. What is that supreme person? He is Ananta, he is Achyuta, and that, like that he is trying to bring that, um, the, the, what do you say, the superiority or the, the, the best of the qualities of the so-called personality of God. So that is why they, he is trying to bring it. Okay. okay. Because Veda, sometimes people say, oh, this Veda is talking about, maybe he is talking about this Devata, maybe that Veda is talking about some impersonal Brahman, maybe this Upanishad is talking about. So because I know I have heard, I have attended some um, other Upanishad classes in which they talk about, I have already specifically, even same Isha Upanishad I have attended in uh, other institutions, same Mundaka Upanishad I have attended in other other institutions. So uh, the same Isha Vashyam Vidam Sarvam, um, same sloka, it is it can be interpreted totally in that uh, impersonal state of somebody, uh, some infinite thing, and from that infinite thing, something comes, and then so it is more or less like a more and a different kind of uh, perspective. So that is why Prabhupada wants to ensure that you know uh, uh, you learn the way Upanishads, Vedas, but you you don't accept Krishna, then it is a problem. 
So goal is always to see that you know, um, understand Krishna in that perspective. Mm -hmm. And how to do it is through devotees. So that is what is making that. He can deliver it to you. Because we may not be able to understand. That is why if you want to search out Krishna by studying with it, not possible. It's better to accept through uh, uh, devotees. So then that is much more easy. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Mamsi Prabhu? Yeah. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, originally, there was only one Veda and there was no necessity of reading it. People were so intelligent and had such sharp memories that by once hearing from the lips of the spiritual master, they would understand. They would immediately grasp the whole purport. But 5,000 years ago, Vyasadeva put the Vedas in writing for the people in this age, Kali Yuga. He knew that eventually the people would be short-lived. Their memories would be very, very would be very poor, and their intelligence would not be very sharp. Therefore, let me teach this Vedic knowledge in writing. He divided the Vedas into four: Rig, Sama, Atharva, and Yajur. Then he gave the charge of these Vedas to his different disciples. He then thought of the less intelligent class of men, Stri, Sudra, and Vijabhandu. He considered the woman class and Sudra class, worker class, and Dvijabandhu. Dvijabandhu refers to those who are born in a high family but who are not properly qualified. A man who is born in the family of Brahmana but is not qualified as a Brahmana is called Dvijabandhu. For those persons, for these persons, he compiled the Mahabharata called the History of India and 18 Puranas. These, all, these are all part of the Vedic literature, the Puranas, the Mahabharata, the Four Vedas and the Upanishads. The Upanishads are part of the Vedas. Then Vyasadeva summarized all Vedic knowledge for scholars and philosophers in what is called the Vedanta Sutra. This is the last word of the Vedas. Okay. I think this is also very easy. So, so, so initially it was only one Veda that came from from the from Krishna to Brahma, but uh, but because of the age, because of the Kali Yuga perspective, uh, Vyasadeva again compiled this into compiled or differentiated into four major categories: the Rig, Sama, Yajur, uh, Adharvana Veda, and then he also based upon the class of intelligence. Again, he brought um, Mahabharata and. Uh, the 18 Puranas. Okay. So 18 Puranas, again divided into Sattva Guna Purana, Rajo Guna Purana, and, and, and Tamo Guna Puranas. And uh, based on uh, the level of understanding, the same knowledge is, is kind of uh, uh, brought in a different way so that they will be able to understand it in a much more clear. Okay. Vedanta Sutra is very nice. So Vedanta, so Shankaracharya wrote, many of the uh, contemporary Acharyas wrote uh, commentary on Vedanta Sutra. So Ramanujacharya also brought in uh, Bhashyam. Bhashyam means some kind of uh, commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Shankaracharya also brought out commentaries on Vedanta Sutra. So Vedanta Sutra is the Pramanam or the uh, or the kind of Pramanam or uh, what do you say? The, the scripture from which all other things emanated. Okay. So even today, I mean, even in Google, we have this Vedanta Sutra. If you just Google out Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, the, the, the entire company is now available in English, Sanskrit, and other languages also. Yeah. And Upanishads is, is nothing but the, uh, the way of understanding or the kind of little more um, diluted level of the Vedantas. Okay. So, um, Puranas and Puranas are, are kind of mixed be between stories, um, Kata and the philosophy. And uh, only philosophy is Vedanta. A little diluted way of seeing that philosophy is, is in the Upanishads. So that is why Upanishads are a little more easier to understand uh, compared to the actual original Vedas. And um, from Puranas, if you read through, uh, either compared between uh, Ediyas as Puranas, more or, more or less, you can see it as from a story perspective. And then from the story, you will be able to get the philosophical understanding. Okay. 
Hare Krishna. Hmm. Vyasdev personally wrote the Vidan Sutra under the instructions of Narada, his Guru Maharaj, spiritual master. But still he was not satisfied. That is a long story. Describe him Srimad Bhagavatam. Ved Vyas was not very satisfied even after compiling many Puranas and Upanishads and even after writing the Vedan Sutra. Then his spiritual master Narada instructed him, You explain the Vedan Sutra. Vedant means ultimate knowledge. And the ultimate knowledge is Krishna. Krishna says that throughout all the Vedas, one has to understand him. Vedesha sarvera aham eva vedya. Krishna also says, Vedant krid ved vid eva chaham. I am the compiler of the Vedant Sutra. And I am the knower of the Vedas. Therefore, the ultimate objective is Krishna. That is explained in all, all the Vaishnava commentaries on Vedanta philosophy. We, Godly Vaishnavas, have our commentary on the Vedanta philosophy called Govinda Bhashya by Baladev Vidya Bhushan. Similarly, Ramanuja Charya has a commentary and Madhva Charya has one. The version of Shankara Charya is not, not the only commentary. There are many Vedanta commentaries. But because the Vaishnavas did not present the first Vedanta commentary, People are under the wrong impression that Shankaracharya is, is the only Vedanta commentary. Besides that, Vyasadeva himself wrote the perfect Vedanta commentary, Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the first words of the Vedanta Sutra, Janamadi Asya Yataha. And that Janamadi Asya Yataha is fully explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. The Vedanta Sutra simply hints at what is Brahm. Prabhuji, if you can scroll up. Brahm. What is Brahm? The absolute truth. The absolute truth is that from whom everything emanates. This is the summary. This is the summary, but it is explained in detail in Srimad Bhagavatam. If everything is emanating from the absolute truth, then what is the nature of the absolute truth? That is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. The absolute truth must be conscious, consciousness. He is self-effulgent, Swarat. He he de- we develop our consciousness and knowledge by receiving knowledge from others. But for him, it is said that he is self-effulgent. The whole summary of Vedic knowledge is the Vedanta Sutra. And the Vedanta Sutra is explained by the writer himself in Srimad Bhagavatam. We finally request those who are actually after Vedic knowledge to try to understand the explanation of all the Vedic knowledge from Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna. So Vyasadev, uh, Vedanta Sutra, initially, as I mentioned, initially it was, many of them thought because after um, the the Buddhism, the wild uh, Chunyavadi one, the Sankaracharya wanted to re-establish that Vedas principle, re-establish the principles of Vedas. That is why Sankaracharya came. So he had a particular purpose and Sankaracharya uh, came back, uh, re-established the Vedas and the Vedas are the Pramanam, they have to be accepted. So many of them started accepting Vedas. But uh, you know what happened? Because Shankaracharya came and then because uh, he gave the commentary on uh, uh, Bhashyam or the Vedanta Sutra, everybody thought that is the primary one. But later on, when the other uh, other Acharyas like uh, Ramanuja Acharya um, and other Acharya like Madhvacharya and others, others started coming, then others other things also started coming. But because primarily first one came, then everybody thought that is the one. Okay? So I think Prabhupada makes it very nicely mentioning that everybody um, uh, everybody's commentary initially uh, focus is more towards accepting the supreme lord okay so we accept going the bhashan with balde vidya bhushan so again balde vidya bhushan is from uh, is west bengal right? right now for example if you read through bhagavad gita whatever balde vidya bhushan gave us gita commentary that only Prabhupada expanded okay mahesh probably you have a clarification Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. So I think uh, my question is, uh, Ved, Ved Vyas has already written Vedanta Sutra, right? Yeah. So why why then we need commentaries, uh, you know, maybe by, like the first commentary was written by Shankaracharya, then later commentaries were written by other people. Why do we need commentaries, you know, if, if Vedanta Sutra was already written? Commentaries help us to understand it more clearly. Like, why, for example, why do we need purport? Same thing. Uh, to make it more, uh, bring us near, like issue opposition means, the word itself is like to bring it uh, more closer to us to understand. So it will be one liner and as one liner uh, sloka, but within that one line sloka, what is the actual um, understanding? So that is why commentaries are, important. commentaries help us to expand that particular knowledge. Like for example, we have purports, right? So all the Bhakti Vedanta purport, uh, if you read if you read through the purport or if you read through the sloka, it will have a, a, a sutra. Sutra means what only the rules, right? Uh, only the 
what do you say the law law book or the uh, rules so it may not have uh, what is the de definition the hypothesis theory or whatever be the portion of it that is why they uh, the commentaries or versions yeah. are brought Okay, Prabhuji. So this, uh, maybe after writing the Vidhan Sutra, Vyas, they also written Srimad Bhagavatam, but he did not call that this is the commentary, you know, like because it is it is written here that, you know, that was treated only by Vaishnavas, they treated Srimad Bhagavatam as the commentary. No, no, no. no, no. Um, he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam just to relish, just to bring out for everybody and everybody. So he wrote Vedanta Sutra. Still, he, he was not fully satisfied because Narada, Narada Rishi mentioned that even though you have given it everything for the welfare of the people, uh, even today's class I was mentioning. So uh, 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 yeah, Vyasadeva had the sense of responsibility for the mankind. He is making it very clear. I am giving this knowledge for the welfare of the people. So that is why he wrote the, he compiled all the Vedas, he gave Vedanta Sutra. But still, uh, uh, he was not fully satisfied because people are not able to understand the ultimate goal of life. So what he wants is all the all the Jivatma living entities, either way, either through Vedanta Sutra or the Upanishad, whatever be, they should understand their goal of life and then attain attain that perfection. That was his goal. But still, what the, what is the main point is uh, he was not fully satisfied because he didn't he didn't uh, write enough on the glories of the Lord's pastimes. So that is what Narada told that. You write a separate one, which will just glorify uh, the pastimes of the Lord. Okay? So that is where he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam is not only for Vaishnavas. It can be accepted for anybody and everybody. But uh, the, how do they take it in their perspective? It depends on them. That's all. Even Vedanta Sutra also. We Vaishnavas, we also accept Vedanta Sutra because that is the actual uh, Shruti. Like that is the actual Pramana. But how do we accept it is through the commentaries. And with that commentaries from Malaya Balde Vidya Bhushan, it is much more clearer. That's all. Understand, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So this this ends the um, introduction. So quick recap on introduction. So what we saw in the introduction is all about. Pramanas, right? The Pratyaksha Pramana, direct persons perception, Anumana Pramana, hypothetical and Shabda Pramana from the authorities. So we know this example, right? Four men or five blind men uh, checking on the elephant. So uh, based on their own perception, sense perception and their own way of understanding, they might conclude uh, in a totally different way. So this is what uh, Krishna brought in and then Prabhupada also mentioned. It. But the supreme science so through the discipline section is always accepted. Prabhupada is giving this statement, okay? Uh, Siksha Gurus give the spiritual instruction on, inspiration on behalf of the Prabhupada and our Guru Parampara. So Diksha Guru gives spiritual instruction, inspiration, formal initiation and a spiritual name and later imparts the sacred Gayatri Mantras to a qualified disciple as a service to as a service to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Parampara. So whatever be it, it is just a service to um, our Acharya Parampara. So Siksha Guru's main, uh, main, main role is to give the instruction and inspiration uh, on behalf of Prabhupada. Because whatever uh, whatever we speak or whatever the, uh, the so-called uh, Siksha Guru speak is all from Prabhupada only, nothing, nothing beyond Prabhupada. And Prabhupada has taken it from his Acharya. Prabhupada has taken it from Paladevi Bhushan. Prabhupada would have taken it from Rupa Goswami. Prabhupada would have taken it from Jiva Goswami. Whatever be it, it is all from the Acharya Prabhupada. What is the qualification? We saw, we saw, we saw two main qualifications. One is uh, from, a, from a bona fide spiritual path and then he is firmly this is exam question point. Okay, So from uh, exam question point of view, what are the two qualifications? One is he should be very clearly, thoroughly understood on the Brahman philosophy. Okay, what is uh, what is the knowledge? Second is how that is being brought out. Tadvinyatam sa guru yama vijay. This sloka we know. Okay, samit parinam shlokam Brahman nisho. This sloka also. Uh, this is just a quick understanding. Most of you will know this, right? So uh, where do we stand? We stand somewhere here between uh, the Namahata coordinator or the peaceful. We have the temple presidents. Then the, this is the regional body. At the regional body, you will have some sannyasis and acharyas. And at the GBC, uh, you will have the Guru Services Committee, Sanyasa and all, and then directly reporting to Shilapdupa. This is just from a 
GBC or is called IDC perspective, how we are all uh, following the structure. So we have a very formal structure. We follow that. Uh, um, there's nothing called flat management. Okay, so it is hierarchical structure because knowledge comes from the top. That is what we have done. Typically, management will say, "Oh, it should be a flat management." No, we don't want to go by a flat management because uh, the the level of understanding, our qualification is way way far less compared to the next. And then we have temple uh, disciples and congregation disciples. So resident disciples are nothing but our full time devotees, and we have congregation. So th this is a separate ministry. Congregation ministry and temple uh, departments are also there. So this is again about talking about cooperation. So anywhere we should understand, we always align to the temple authority so that we have full uh, full unity and cooperation, and then we are able to serve nicely. This is one of the oldest photos where it, it brings out Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his. Um, School, Ganga Pandit School. Okay, so at some point of a time, uh, if you see any old photos of Mahaprabhu's paintings and all, this is one of the old paintings. Yeah, four, uh, four things that we have already seen. Okay, commit, commit to mistakes, illusion, uh, cheating, propensity, and imperfect senses. The Sanskrit word. Okay, Brahma, Pramada, Vipralupsa, and Thanks. These things we all know. You know, right, right? I think this is from our school days, we'd have seen this. What is this? Photo of young or old. Ah, young or you see in one perspective is young girl, in another perspective, it is old woman. Okay. Same like similarly, is this a triangle or is it a circle or what do you see? We can see a square. So this again one. This also it is one perspective. These are some of the examples. Okay. This so you all know. Is it moving or not moving? Is moving but it's based on our eye movement, it will move. Yes. Yeah, so it is again kind of an illusion. So whatever you see may not be hundred percent true. So because this is again from a typical uh, the so-called latest next gen or gen next people say I will see then only I believe I will. So they don't believe anything until otherwise they see, right? Or until they undergo that experience. Yes. Even after undergoing that experience, they will not be able to understand. That is the truth. So this is this is one uh, this is one mistake. So we might think we might think oh this is this is one uh, we might think that this is this is uh, what do you say what is the runway one or not? this uh, I don't know what is this called separately. Yeah. We might think oh this will this will huh? this will take me to the plane actually. So you start walking then finally you don't end up there. Uh, what is this called separately? I don't know. But anyway, that's okay. So sometimes we commit mistakes that oh. Why should everybody follow this? Let me take a different path. Right? So most of them will say, no, everybody are following this. Let me take a different path. And that path will never lead us to the correct. Uh, we end up somewhere in the middle. Commit mistakes. So with all these divisions, we cannot give perfect uh, knowledge to anyone, nor we understand it. So we accept Vedas as they are. So this is a very nice point. Very beautiful photo. Let's keep going. So this we have seen from second chapter of Bhagavad Gita also, rightly. Uh, the flowery words of Vedas. Remember Bhagavad Gita? I don't know whether you still remember. After you are passing, after six months, okay, the Vedas deal mostly with fruitive activities, right? So um, initially, if you start understanding, if you want to understand the uh, way how to work, how to perform karma, Vedas provide that. But if you go a little more detailed, deeper understanding of Vedas, then we'll get the 15th chapter of Purushottam Yoga Sloka. 15, 15. Mobile is collector. Huh? Okay. This is what I told you. So 2.45 Karma Kanda portion of Vedas. So what is exactly meant by Upa Nishad? Nishad means bringing. Okay. Upa means bringing, getting closer. And then Nishadhi means bringing. Okay, so that is why all the Upanishads try to bring us towards Krishna, or we go to Krishna. 
okay, whatever the supreme law. So these are some of the major Upanishads. Major Upanishads, Isha Upanishad, Kena Upanishad, Katha Upanishad, Mundaka Upanishad, person of Mandukya. This is very nice. Chandokya Upanishad is very nice. I have, I have studied. Mandukya is also very good. These are all very, Mundaka is very, very small. Isha Upanishad is also very smallest one. But Mundaka is much more small. Okay, Mundaka Upanishad, Isha Upanishad, Mandukya. These are all some of the rishis who have given it. So that is why the name is also there. Taitre Rishi, Aitre Rishi, Chandokya. So these are all names provided by them, but still uh, all the Upanishads goal is to understand the Supreme Law. Okay. And this is a very interesting, uh, so this is again, you can use it for your uh, Ananta Prabhu. Prabhu, of the many, uh, specifically the 11 topmost, why Prabhu chose to translate Isho specifically? Because uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, I mean the fundamental, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gave that first commentary, number one. Okay, so uh, why Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati gave? Because it is much more um, sh shortest one, number one, because only 18 verses, but very, very powerful. And directly, uh, other Upanishads also um, deal with, uh, with the personality of God, but go through a different route, different way of understanding. It will take a little more, um, more, more uh, longer path to understand or get to that knowledge and more sloka verses also. But the shortest is Isha Upanishad and directly hitting uh, the, the, the glories and the understanding of the knowledge of accepting Krishna or accepting the supreme absolute truth. So in, in the Upanishad, nowhere it will be mentioned as Krishna. Okay. It will talk only about, so now it is, it is kind of, a, this Isha Upanishad is more of an abstract way of, it may, you can call it as abstract theory, but it is more of uh, talking about the uh, supreme uh, absolute truth or absolute Brahman, whatever be it. So this is, these are some of the reasons that's all. And the third reason is because Upanishads are, are widely accepted as uh, uh, apart from uh, apart from um, the Idiyas Puranas, Isha Upanishad is accepted widely across everywhere. So that is why uh, these are these are three major reasons. Okay. I, I heard it from one of the lectures. So why Prabhupada wrote? Because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gave. Number two, it is very short and very powerful. Number three, this is widely getting accepted also. Other Upanishads are also there, no, no doubt about it. But uh, the, actually, he wanted to write more. In, in one sense, he wanted to write more. Right? If at all he had time, he would have written more uh, more on all these subject matters. But still, he wanted to give some glimpse on this Upanishads and he chose issue Upanishads. That's all. Understood, Prabhu. Prabhu, Prabhu, one more follow-up question. Sorry, Pankaj Prabhu, go ahead. No, please, you, you finish first. Okay. So, Prabhu, you mentioned Vedas are the comprehensive, Vedas are the uh, sort of the end-to-end -end knowledge, right? But you also mentioned right now, Vedas never say at any point that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, if the comprehensive knowledge of a sea doesn't give the direct conclusive evidence, uh, then what it's trying to solve? What's the purpose of that Veda if they don't give any conclusive evidence? What I meant was, what I meant was, it will just mention um, um, uh, the absolute truth, the absolute Brahman, like that. The, I, what I meant really was the word uh, Krishna, or it, it will go in a different, different um, um, way of representation, but not as the word Krishna. Okay, so that is why um, we don't really get into. Um, uh, to the full level of understanding this knowledge because Bhagavatam is much more sweeter, much more direct and much more uh, easier for us to accept through the past times of Krishna. Um, the conclusion of Vedas is always the same. Okay? It is accepting that Param Brahman, Param Param Dhamma, everything is same. But why they are not bringing out the word Krishna is because they may get misinterpreted. They might think that, oh, this is not the, uh, this is not the actual uh, thing. So that is why they, have, they are not Anywhere it is, it is like brought out. For example, how do we uh, see from a relative understanding is um, the understanding about Srimati Radharani's position in Srimad Bhagavad. So nowhere, we, we even though we don't see uh, Srimati Radharani's position glorified or brought out in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, our Acharyas are able to uh, identify, interpret that uh, why her position is great in, in Srimad Bhagavatam itself and from other, um, other next level of commentaries and then she is getting glorified. Same way, when you see when you see through Isha Upanishad, it will it will glorify the supreme Brahman. It will glorify the absolute realization. It will glorify that Mahatattva. It will glorify that Purusha Avatar or Purusha Tattva. 
Okay. Why? Because when you directly mention this as Krishna, it may not be accepted across everybody uh, who are going from a, a typical, a different kind of school or a different kind of philosophical understanding. So that is why this is being restricted that in, a, in, a, in an abstract understanding, the knowledge has to be accepted by everybody, first point. Second, if they are really interested, let them come to the next level and then go through the uh, the Puranas, go through the uh, the Sattva Guna Puranas, then they will be able to release that and get to understand it. At some point of the time, for example, if how do we, the third way of realization is, for example, this um, the, 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 the Dhyana Yogis, so when they really, when they really uh, concentrate or uh, pray on the on the Paramatma, they don't see it as Krishna. They see only Paramatma, and but that is also true. That there is there is no there is no uh, lesser degree or lesser quality. This one when they when they study when they when they pray on Paramatma, but it is not a direct like uh, the Shamsundra Krishna. So that is why all the way of worship all the way of understanding that that supreme brahman supreme krishna is accepted what our we are why we are so fortunate is that particular personality Prabhupada brought out or our sampradaya brought out very separately and make it clear that who is that is this, is this krishna so directly you can do it directly you can just chant directly you can worship krishna directly do this so it's just more much more easier that's all Okay, Prabhu. Okay. So, so Prabhu, the, the underlying message in all the Upanishads then is same. Yeah. It is different way of representation. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And uh, so, Prabhuji, these are named after the Rishis, as you said. But, um, uh, you know, when we read the introduction, you know, it also says that Vedvyasa was not very satisfied even after compiling many Puranas and Upanishads. So, these are compiled verses, these are written or spoken. How do we understand it? Sorry, Prabhu, I was a little late in joining. Maybe you have already explained this. Correct. You know, your, your understanding is correct. So, Mandukya, Mandukya, uh, the Rishi Mandukya wrote, the, mm -hmm. or brought out, and then it was compiled by the other ones. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, Ram Prabhu, Sorry, Ram Prabhu, you were saying something. Sorry, Prabhu. Okay, Prabhu, I just wanted to add one point, if I may so. Uh, the question of, on uh, what, what uh, Anantacharya Prabhu asked, right? Why do we need, uh, if if uh, Veda didn't bring out the proper message, why do we need uh, the commentary like Bhagavatam? So if you look at uh, the first canto, there's conversation between Vedvyas and Narada Rishi, right? So there it is clearly brought out that Vedas, if I if I understand it right, Vedas uh, talks about various rules and regulations, etc. So practically, if you see people uh, by following the rules and regulations, they finally uh, you know lose the end conclusion and they get lost in the rules and regulations itself. Like Prabhu explained about the uh, yogis performing tapasya and all these things, right? They start concentrating more on the the way they do the tapasya rather than the final result. That is what happened uh, happening in Kaliuga. That is the reason why uh, Narad Muni advised Vedvyas to directly focus on the conclusion itself because people of people in Kaliuga are not uh, intelligent enough. They are like uh, he quotes the uh, analogy of a crow. Uh, you know, how a crow cannot find uh, a gem or a diamond in the garbage. Okay. Good. Nice. This is another uh, good perspective. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving. You want a break? Oh, let's finish this portion, then we'll take a small break. Okay, this is a, you can go through. The, I'll share this slide. You can go through this later also. How generally the the structure of the Shruti and Smriti is brought out. Okay, Smriti is through all the uh, tantras, panchatantras, the Puranas, Itihasas through the understanding, and the Shruti is through uh, how do we through the hearing portion. Okay? Both are both are uh, accepted way, and uh, accepted according to the this one. Okay, so for example, Vedanga. You have different Vyakarnas, you have different Chandas, different uh, what do you say, the rules and regulations. So these are all 
um, the what do you say one one snapshot view of Vedic knowledge with us. Okay. So this, for example, Vedanta, Mimamsa, Nyaya philosophy, Vaisheshika philosophy, Yoga, Shankya philosophy. So these are all some of the philosophies that directly uh, brought or based on the actual uh, Vedic information. This this um, philosophies are brought up. That's all. So okay, Mimamsa philosophy, uh, Nyaya philosophy, all these philosophies are logically the the understanding may be in a different perspective, but the source is always from the main Vedas. Okay. So, I, I, in, in our uh, Indian philosophy, somebody will uh, will follow certain spiritual things, somebody will follow one particular thing to become expert. So, it is all there. So, it is nothing uh, nothing short of like, you know, whether this is uh, one concatenation. This is all, whatever we are doing, it is already there. Okay. Samhita, we know the various Samhitas, right? Uh, there are so many Samhitas. We all know only Brahma Samhita. Like that, there are so many Samhitas also. Samhitas are nothing but direct mantras, uh, talk in glorification. So like that is like okay. Let's keep going. Last week I met one yoga lady, and they they call themselves as what do you say? Ashtangis, Ashtangis or yoga, some name. So they follow one yoga process, and they 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 follow very nice. I mean the way they are following following that. Uh, Philosophical understanding of the Ashtanga is very nice. They follow, uh, they don't eat, they follow Ayurveda, they don't eat after sun set, uh, they follow very strict diet and they do a lot of yoga. Uh, and uh, they call, for example, we call ourselves the Vaishnavas devotees. They call themselves Ashtangis or some, no, I forgot. But very uh, profound understanding. Uh, they the, the person lady was very calm, composed, and um, everything was good. Like, you know. When we try to interact with them, we see this one. So she was also sharing her, uh, like how we, we come, when we say how I did, we came into Krishna consciousness, the, that lady was uh, sharing her uh, way of how she brought, she came into that particular, uh, and, uh, it is quite interesting, but uh, she is very good yoga uh, expert and teacher and all. What I understood was uh, her source was kind of more, uh, kind of authentic, like no. So then I realized, okay, the source may be from here, somewhere, uh, either from uh, Patanjali Yoga or somewhere. She uh, and she has a guru and she's following that particular. Thing. Then maybe it's a very minor, uh, small group, not known everywhere. But uh, the way she brought from the understanding from our her uh, acharya, and then I realized that yes, maybe it is also one of the kind of authentic ones. So the goal may be same, but the time taken to reach that goal may be different. So, so that is why, why this point is, uh, whenever we try to interact with many, with many people, everybody will have their own path. Okay? We should not uh, disrespect or underestimate their path. Okay? We should see that um, they follow certain procedures, but how do we, how do uh, they align that procedure and then uh, give them a chance to come very quickly? Okay? So Prabhupada, why he is mentioning is, even though their path is correct, the time taken for that path may be very cumbersome, very uh, time late and all. So that part is alone we have to convey to them. So chanting of the Lord's name is much more um, easier and flexible than performing all this. So like that, when we try to bring out, then it is, it is much more um, easy for us to pay. So we have to give respect to whomsoever doing that. Okay. Ajay Prabhu? But the, the process of yoga, right now, people who are is taking up, right, including Ramdev and the art of living, they are all focused more on their own physical body, material body, and material life rather than uh, the the Paramatma. No, no, that is that is the LKG level, that is UKG level. When if you go and sit and really uh, you sit and ask with them, can I go to the next level and all? Definitely, they'll have a, they they should have it because the the way they I mean I'm not trying to be over overestimating their this one. Um, outwardly, try to be more public, try to cover up, may cover more mass. They are calling the Ashtanga way or the yoga way. So that everybody will jump. But if you go go a little deeper into them, they will definitely have. Otherwise, it may not be authentic. Otherwise, it may not stand for a long time. Right? So definitely, when you go into the deeper this one, at some point of the time, um, they will they will they will reveal the truth. Yes, no. 
uh, all your ashtanga yoga you are already perfect now start uh, focusing on the paramatma like that they will have i mean we don't know but i i believe it should have otherwise it is very difficult for them to sustain ajay prabhu uh, yes prabhu two two things one is uh, just to answer uh, ram shankar prabhu's uh, question i mean in in depth after if if we if we see the tv part of it yes they are very much like exercising on tv and trying to get more and more but uh, if we go and join some of their classes and all they go much deeper but definitely they are at parmatma level or you know trying to go towards that one uh, so that that's what my my experience is uh, but just for my question in in this uh, chart we see shank uh, uh, atheist kapila so this one is why why it's called atheist kapila there's one philosophy provided by uh, another kapila okay. this is only talking about the uh, sankhya part which means follow these rules and regulations and uh, there's nothing at the shunyam that because at the end it is not accepting that particular um, uh, the supremacy of the lord the, the, the metaphysical part is accepted metaphysical part is uh, do this uh, particular exercise you will get you will get breathing very nicely you do pranayama uh, niyamagraha this follow this uh, um, niyamas you will but the ultimate samadhi portion is also recommended but ultimate samadhi towards whom that is zero that is like uh, don't know or that is like not required uh, like you concentrate on abstract you concentrate on some jyoti concentrate on the sound some metal 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 level means more or at uh, abstract level not at the uh, level by which we are able to accept Uh, one supreme person that's all the vipassana type of something yeah are... vipassana correct vipassana yes, yes so why why we are using this we i mean yeah they are they are doing this but at least they are doing something okay, so that is where we have to see so we don't have to get into their thing and why what no let's not time waste time there on their research activities but we we just have to be sure that okay at least something is going on and that's all thank you prabhu One day I got an advertisement for something called as Inner Engineering from Isha. Okay, I was like, "Wow, very nice uh, coined word. What is that Inner Engineering? Uh, engineering, Inner Engineering." And then uh, somebody from uh, when I was standing near Perumal Temple, somebody came. Our Isha Yoga Center. We are practicing engine engineering. And they gave me one pla- pamphlet. I, I I was like, uh, seeing the word engineering, I was like, "Oh," but the same thing only. Nothing. Uh, this one, the coining of the word, uh, the packaging is so nicely brought out. But um, yeah, how how do they commercialize it? Is their uh, their fate, unfortunately. So that is what we have to see. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see. Prastana, okay. Nyaya prastana, okay. Shruti prastana and Shmriti prastana. So what is the difference? The Maya the philosophy accepts only the Nyaya prastana and Shruti prastana, rejecting the Smriti like that which is through the. So more or less they accept everything. Only thing is the final portion of accepting the the personality of portion. Otherwise, uh, realization of the Brahman, realization of the self uh, and the Jivatma, all those things are not. But one one part of them they say everything is same. Everything becomes one. So that is where um, uh, the the knowledge portion stops. Otherwise, mostly to, they also come along with us to <laughs> half the way. But after the half the way, it is it is completely different. Okay, so that is where we have to understand. Why why we should why we should learn Upanishads because Upanishads gives that reference that uh, uh, some kind of logical conclusions where we can refer and make our statements very strong. So overview of Vedic literature, Upanishads. Why, uh, why Prabhupada published Upanishads? Yeah, this question is there. Okay, if you read through, you will get that. Three types of evidence, four defects of uh, conditioned soul, reason for accepting Vedic authority. Shabda Praman. Okay, maybe we will take a small break. What is time? Eleven forty. Or we will stop here. Or we will take. Huh? Or we will go for another half an hour now. Maybe yeah, we'll yeah, take five minutes break. Yeah, we'll take a eleven five minute break, then come back. We'll complete. Uh, we'll start and then complete by twelve thirty. Half an hour we'll go. We'll say we'll take a five minute break.
उसको कॉज की जाए All emanations from him, such as this phenomenal word, are perfectly equipped as complete wholes. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself, because he is the complete whole. Even though so many complete units emanate from him, he. Purport. The complete whole or the supreme absolute truth is the complete personality of Godhead. A realization of impersonal Brahma or of the Paramatma. The super soul is incomplete realization of the absolute complete. The supreme personality of Godhead is Satchidananda Vigraha. Realization of impersonal Brahma is realization of his Sat feature or his aspect of eternity, and Paramatma realization is realization of his Sat and Chit features, his aspects of eternity and knowledge. But realization of the personality of Godhead is realization of all transcendental features, Sat, Chit, and Anand. Please. When one realizes the supreme person, he realizes these aspects of the absolute truth in their completeness. Vigraha means form. Thus, one complete whole is not formless. If he were formless, or if he were less than his creation in any other way, he could not be complete. The complete whole must contain everything both within and beyond our experience. Otherwise, cannot be complete. The complete whole, the personality of God, that is immense potencies, all of which are as complete as he is. Thus, this phenomenal world is also complete in itself. The twenty-four elements of which this material universe is a temporary manifestation are arranged to produce everything necessary for the maintenance and sustenance subsistence of this universe. No other unit in the universe need make an extra extraneous effort to try to maintain the universe. The universe functions on its own time scale, which is fixed by the energy of the complete whole. And when that scale is, which can you scroll up, please? And when that schedule is completed, this temporary manifestation will be annihilated by the complete arrangement of the complete whole. All facilities are given to the small complete units, namely the living beings, to enable them to realize the complete whole. All forms of incompleteness are experienced due to incomplete knowledge of the complete whole. The human form of life is a complete manifestation of the consciousness of the living being, and it is obtained after evolving through 8.4 million species of life in the cycle of birth and death. If in this human life of full consciousness the living entity does not realize his complete completeness in relation to in relation to the complete whole, he loses the chance to realize his completeness and is again put into the evolutionary cycle by the law of material nature. Because we do not know that there is a complete arrangement in nature for our maintenance, we make efforts to utilize. Utilize the resources of nature to create a so-called complete life of sense enjoyment. Because the living entity cannot enjoy the life of senses without being dovetailed with the complete whole, the misleading life of sense enjoyment is illusion. The hand of a body is a complete unit only as long as it is attached to the complete body. When the hand is severed from the body, it may appear like a hand, but it actually has none of the potencies of a hand. Similarly, living beings are part and parcel of the complete whole, and if they are severed from the Complete whole, the illusory representation of the completeness cannot fully satisfy them. Hare Krishna. The, com the completeness, completeness of human life. Yes. Hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Prabhu, you can continue. <laughs> okay, three more lines. Finish it. Finish. The completeness of human life can be realized only when it engages in the service of the complete whole. All services in this world, whether social, political, international, or even interplanetary, will remain incomplete until they are dovetailed with the complete whole. When everything is dovetailed with the complete whole, the attached parts and parcels also become complete in themselves. Okay, so this is very. Uh, how do you understand it more from a very abstract theory perspective? What is the word um, Om? Okay, Purnam. Okay, Purnam Adaya, Purnam Eva Vasishtate, Purnam. 
idam purnam anam so uh, we will have to we'll have to dissect certain portions to understand this okay. first thing of understanding is perfection and then complete whole okay we say wholesome food or uh, complete food okay now and how do we there are multiple uh, ways of understanding this maybe we will go from simple understanding to a very complicated understanding okay then right. when you say complete whole what is meant by the complete here everywhere the word uh, uh, complete or the complete unit or the whole is being used right how do we how do we understand like i will we will, we will just we will just throw forth the question and see how we can realize this completeness Hmm. What 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 are the what are ways by which you will say uh, completeness or in total? Prabhupada is giving this uh, Sachidananda. So when somebody says absolute complete, absolute truth or absolute thing means such chit and everything together. Okay, only certain portion is such, certain portion is only chit and ananda also. So, but together it is called as Sachidananda. Okay, that is what Prabhupada is giving as an example. Okay, which means uh, through the um, through the Archa Vigraha form or the form in which we are able to see the Bhagavan realization portion that is in total all together, the Sat portion, Chit portion and the Ananda portion. Okay? So complete whole or the complete Purnam must contain everything both within and beyond our experience otherwise we cannot be. So how do we understand it? Very. How does, I mean at, at the higher level when you read through the slogan and translation, what do you really understand? You be very, uh, you can you can share your realization. Okay, then we will see how we can make you understand, or we will try to make ourselves more understanding. What do you what do you think is it like? Okay, something is there or uh... so partially. Uh, you shared about this when I asked the earlier question about demigods can also exhibit multiple forms at a time, but you mentioned they are limited by their potential. Potency. Not everyone can do everything on its whole. Mm. So, whereas the Supreme Lord is complete uh, in all, infinite in all the aspects, infinite things, he's infinite. Yes, that's one perspective, absolutely right. Okay. So, from the energy perspective, from the knowledge perspective, and from the strength perspective also, when we say uh, six Aishwaryas, Aishwarya is Samagrasya. So, from the six opulences, we can also see uh, that why Krishna is uh, Purnam because that particular portion is wholesome and uh, uh, combined together is also wholesome. Okay, so that is how it is one way. Good. Okay, then Puji, in, this is not re directly related to this uh, our spiritual realization, but we normally, you know, uh, in material sense, we say zero plus zero is equal to zero and zero minus zero is equal to zero. And then we take into the spiritual realization that all that emanates from him goes back to him. And all, um, all uh, if you talk about human beings, it is the whole uh, realization that they come from the complete whole and then go, go back to the complete whole. That is Krishna. Okay. okay. Uh, Ram Prabhu. Prabhu, uh, one is Ananta Prabhu mentioned uh, about the you know, how Supreme Lord compared to demigods are, you know, complete. If you look at the qualities, there are 64 qualities. If you look at Brahma, he has 50 or 51 qualities. Lord Shiva has, also has 52. That is why, uh, you know, I, I remember Prabhupada mentioning when Jivas, uh, uh, Jivas, they actually cross 51 qualities, then they come to a stage of, demi, uh, you know, the Lord Shiva. Right, Lord Shiva stage, where Lord Shiva is considered neither a jiva nor a uh, demigod. So, um, similarly, if you look at Krishna, Krishna has the whole 64 qualities in full. But if you look at the avatars of Krishna, some of them have 60, some of them are 62, 59, you know. But Krishna, the, the personality has all the 64 qualities in full. That is one part. And we also read Prabhupada in, you know, insisting in many places that anything Krishna or anything associated with Krishna is complete in nature. Uh, so, you know, some of the aspects are like, uh, we look for something outside us for happiness, for satisfaction. But Krishna need not, uh, you know, he is completely satisfied, fulfilled in himself. I want to add these points. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so you are, you are, uh, all of you are covering the other portion of uh, why? What is that whole or uh, 
the wholesome or the uh, Krishna is, the, the, but uh, there is another aspect of it. Okay, that is what I am trying to see. If you can, if anybody can share more uh, realization, okay, it, it can be different. one one hint that Krishna gives again and again in Bhagavad Gita is all all of us jiva come to this material world because because we wanted. Uh, we think we lack something, we wanted to enjoy that separately and that's why Maya Devi is helping us to all of amalgamate and give that experience to us but he comes, uh, he again tells in Bhagavad Gita, I don't have any of those uh, va um, vacuumness I, I am complete, he again declares that in Bhagavad Gita, so there is no uh, mm, he's fully like, spiritually fully complete Correct, correct. No, okay. the, the energy portion. He's giving another another analogic what uh, Prabhupada is giving is the, the ocean philosophy. Okay. What how do we understand is ocean by itself is complete, full, and uh, in, in wholesome. In, in total, it is it is already there as an ocean, whatever properties, whatever uh, characteristics, whatever um, thing that you define the word ocean is already there. The more and more rivers flow into it, the more and more thing happens or changes the 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 characteristics of that whole sum does not change even though it is continuously flowing even though water is evaporating whatever be it the whole sum of that particular ocean remains intact okay so in in that perspective you, you need to uh, bring that understanding so when you say krishna uh, when you try to have that avatar or whatever be it the, the krishna has that potent personality remains intact. Krishna with his bhava, with Aishwarya bhava, with whatever be the mood, he is intact. There is no change in him. Uh, there is nothing going to be changed. It remains as it is. He is always in that Vrindavana mood and then he is as Shamsundra accepted. But whatever is coming out has got a particular um, completeness, has got a complete wholeness for the one particular purpose. Let that get completed. And then once that is over, then again the same thing will go back to that wholesome and that wholesome will never will add anything or will get extra anything. It will just be whole as it is. Okay. For example, you have, as you all mentioned nicely, when you have avatar coming out, when you have jivatma coming out, when you have different incarnations, expansions, partial expansions, 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 whatever coming out, that is also wholesome. That is also in a way complete because that has got a particular purpose, that has got a particular way so then let that get completed because it is it is why because it is come from that whole it is perfect okay and because it is complete because it is perfect so once that is over when it go back also there is no change into the actual parent uh, wholesome or apparent complete okay so this is how we try to uh, understand this abstract way of um, philosophical understanding Okay, like this, if you can bring out a lot of examples, then absolutely fine. Okay. Oh, one question. Yes, Prabhu. In line, in line with what Ram Prabhu shared about the 64 qualities mentioned to us by Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Devotion, that the four additional of Krishna is the Rupa, um, the, the Leela Madhuri, Prema Madhuri, Venu Madhuri, and Rupa Madhuri. So my question actually is, Prabhu, when Bhagavan has infinite qualities, which is uh, not able to be comprehended, why are we then restricting that to 64 qualities, which are which are finite? My take is, are we trying to say, okay, these are the primary qualities? If so, what is the basis, Prabhu? I'm just finding it difficult. Why are we limiting the infinite? There's no limitation to it, but these are the basic once given by our uh, or exhibited by Krishna, by which Acharyas have, are able to understand and then compile them. Okay, in that way, in that way, we can see whatever uh, our Acharyas have uh, understood, or in whatever way Krishna was able to exhibit, and then our Acharyas are able to realize and understand. They have brought it out. But one thing they have understood is beyond this sixty-four, that is definitely there. But that we are not able to understand, that we are, we are not able to interpret. But still, we know that Krishna is beyond the gunas. But whatever they are able to extra understand, they are able to. So that that is how they have compiled, or they have been, uh, they have put together as sixty-four. Rightly, you mentioned it is beyond that. But at least uh, to our understanding or to their understanding, they brought it, and then it has cascaded to us. 
the sixty four itself we, in our current state we are not we are not able to uh, fully understand or fully go through it. So we are so more fortunate is our acharyas or previous pensions that is they have brought it up. So in that way only we have to see. It's not that why uh, why they are restricting to sixty four. It is not restricting to sixty four. It is it is the way in which they are able to uh, understand and get that. That's all. Maybe in Goloka Vrindavan, maybe in in a place where he is exhibiting beyond sixty four, and then there are devotees, uh, his close associates, getting that relation understanding. So that may be later on also. But whatever be it, from the shastra, from the pramanam, we can see that that way we have to interpret. Very clear, Prabhu. Thank you. Very clear, Prabhu. Thank you. So I think Prabhu Prabhupada mentioned somewhere, right, that uh, whatever knowledge is being shared here is very limited to our, what is available to us in this universe or something like that. Right. See, last class when, when we were discussing about his NOD, we have, we have seen only the east portions, one particular corner. Okay, so when you go through um, uh, the other oceans, other side, it is like uh, which is called Vyabacharika Bhava, this Bhava, now it's like beyond, like, whoa, then after some time you'll realize, should I really get into it or it's more than enough for me? So that is where our limit, our state of limit will come. Okay, even in, even, even in one book itself, I'm saying. So let us, uh, we have to just see it, okay, this is what is it, and then accept it. That's all. There's something called a Stai Bhava. I was listening to Banu Maharaj lecture and Stai Bhava, he gave me slides. So I started understanding the, the Stai Bhava slides. The Stai Bhava slide, the Bhava is so deep, like, you know, what is this? Like, you know, beyond, and somewhat, and I told, no, 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 this is going beyond uh, this one, and I stopped. Okay. So it is like that. Okay. So we have to accept that, okay, whatever uh, Krishna wanted to reveal, Krishna wanted to show, he has brought the 64, and uh, that itself is like, um, for us, enough for us for our lifetime. Okay, Mataji, is any 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 uh, other point that you wanted to? How do you understand this complete wholesome? Okay, any other abstract theory understanding? Anything? Any other theoretical understanding or practical understanding also? Whatever way you can say practical understanding. The example that Prabhupada gives about uh, son and father. So the father remains as he is and the, uh, the son will also get his qualities and uh, same fe good features and everything. He is also complete and the father is also complete. Right, right, right. That is also a nice example. One more raw example that I have realized is um, it might it may not be that much directly perceived when you when we do this Govardhan Parikrama, Govardhan Puja, or when we do this Annakut festival, it, um, we make a big Anna rice mountain. So um, one one time we realized like we make a big rice mountain, it is wholesome or it is full and completed. So we take out one particular ball or one particular uh, portion of the rice in hand and we try to make some other uh, ball or something else. So what happens is we might think that something has reduced in that particular mountain, but actually there's, they will never see any difference in that mountain. Mountain remains the same or that uh, undercoat remains the same. Then whatever we have it in our hand is also wholesome because uh, whatever product or whatever we wanted to make, uh, we, we, we tried that and we, it was brought in nicely. But after some time, no, one mother says, no, 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 no. Don't want this. You you put it back into the you put it back into the mountain. So one mother came. He just put the same rice ball or rice thing back into the mountain, and suddenly it disappeared into the mountain. Okay. So then we realized there's no change in the mountain. The, the mountain remains the same. The, the I'm saying the giri the giri rice. Okay. And one point of this is the one 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 uh, Prabhu see this is uh, Purnam. I was thinking, oh, what is this here? Then, then they told me, see, this is what is Purnam. See, sometimes you bring it out and then sometimes it goes back to it. Then you see there's no big difference at all. So in, in one way, I, I can, it, it's, a, it's a very raw example. But in one way, I understood that, yes, um, that might be minor uh, ch change in weight or something. But it doesn't really matter because um, whatever is brought out remains as it is intact, uh, wholesome, complete. And when it goes back to the whole, uh, the main one also remains as it is. Without any change. Okay. Good. 
Prabhupada gives the example of sun and sun rays also. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mother, you also mentioned the sun. sun. There is another one given, Prabhuji, I think, from the I think mathematical perspective, you know. Whatever we take, I don't know whether we spoke about this, but you know, from infinity, you know, or ananta, you know, whatever we take out, it still remains as infinity, you know. We multiply, divide, you know, whatever we do, I think it remains as infinity. You know? Correct, correct, correct. Let's see. See what Prabhupada gives in the, the slides. So now this this sloka is kind of by heart sloka, okay. So just by heart it okay. Um Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnam, Purnam Purnam Vichire, Purnasam Buddha Mayavaya, Purnama Vichy. So what is Om? Om is nothing but Krishna. Okay, we all know in Bhagavad Gita he is directly mentioned the, the worm comes from Krishna, okay, wholesome or complete whole. Purnam means perfection. There is a this difference between Om and Purnam. Purnam means perfectly complete. Okay. That that whole complete is perfectly complete. So something that is brought out is also perfectly complete. Okay. There's nothing uh, short of it. Okay. The, so typically in Tamil we say gold. Okay. So you make uh, you bring out some portion of gold uh, from a uh, take out the one particular portion of gold. And the gold qualities of the gold will remain the same, even though there, there might be a difference in the weight or something. But from the quality perspective, perspective, there is no change in the gold. And the same gold when it is again combined with the main gold uh, bar or biscuit, whatever be it, it remains the same. There's no change, there is no increase in the quality. They, even though there might be physically grossly, there might be increase in the quantity, but from a quality perspective, uh, the, the quality of the gold remains as it is. So when you one portion, one portion of the quality uh, of the gold when you brought, bring it out from the gold biscuit or gold bar, that particular portion of uh, five grams or six grams quality is hundred percent same as the same quality of the main source, main bar. And when you bring it back or when you combine both that gold, also remains from a quality perspective, it remains the same. So whatever we talk is all from a uh, quality perspective. The wholesome, the complete whole must contain everything. Okay. So if we were formless or if we were less than his creation, other way, he could not be complete. The complete whole must contain everything both within or beyond. So this is what Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita also, right? Everything rests on me, but I am not in them. Okay, Even in Bhagavatam also, same thing, and in same thing, Aham Sarvasya Prabhava also, the same understanding. Idam means this phenomenal world, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as complete wholes. So, whatever we always say, you know, whatever Krishna creation, everything that Krishna created is perfect. There is nothing short of his perfection. Uh, right from uh, this entire material manifestation to the Panchabhutas, to the to the sky, to the um, to the ocean, trees, plants, animals, everything is perfect only. There is nothing short of perfection. Even though the perfection of the particular entity, of the particular living entity's body or whatever is some 100% perfect. That's all. There's nothing short of that. Whatever we perceive may be less. We, we don't understand. We don't. We may not be able to take it up. But the more and more we see it, then more and more realization we will get it. So, so what are the examples that we have taken from natural? We have already seen. Okay, so many things we have uh, we have seen from the nature whatever we see for example you take tree you take a particular bird you take a particular worm that worm is fully in, incomplete as a worm right what are the characteristics and properties of uh, or the features of a, of a particular uh, earth worm or whatever worm we call it is perfect there's nothing short of being a worm okay similarly any tree anything so in in from the uh, energy's expansion or the entity's expansion itself, we are able to see that it is full. Okay, So in that way, we are able to um, understand. So this is the uh, ocean example we have seen. 
very nice example the, the scarcity of water you you when when water goes into ocean then water gets evaporated the same salt water becomes uh, sweet water okay? but there is no change in uh, the oceans this one and then it remains intact as it is this is also a very nice example as soon as there is um, a child is born the mother starts getting uh, the milk right so this is again very nice so which means it is complete or wholesome so it is nature's arrangement so whatever is happening it is it is perfectly arranged and that is called as completeness or perfection or together it is called perfect completion and then after many years when when the, the child grows then the supply of milk stops automatically Right. So both ways we can see, like you know, the, uh, the the during birth and then after some years also it, it happens. This is all nature's arrangement. This is also another example. So thus this phenomenal world is also complete in itself. The twenty-four material elements of which this material world is temporary manifestation or arranged to produce everything necessary for every. This world is very important. Produce everything necessary for maintenance and subsistence of. So, So no other unit in this universe need to make an extra effort to try to maintain this. Yeah, this is also very important. The human form of life is a complete manifestation of the consciousness of the living. This we saw, right? So out of the 84 lakh species, if you take a small animal or a small insect or bone, that also has got a consciousness, that also has got certain specific features, and that is a pure, complete one. But when you compare that with the full-fledged uh, human form, the consciousness is completely um, uh, in total or in, in a larger extent, it is getting this one, uh, fulfilled or that the wholesome complete is happening from a consciousness perspective. But if you ask whether consciousness of that particular ant is uh, full, yes, it is from that ant perspective, it is full. But when you compare between an ant and a human being or a, and or a plant or human being, the consciousness is completely opposite or it is very less to the topmost. Even so many, even though so many units remain from him, he is still complete. What kind of God is only zero? In the spiritual world, the one is Purna and if you take the whole one, it is still one. That they cannot understand. The poor brain, they think materially. If you want, the one is complete, then the one is taken away, then it becomes zero. And this is what we saw. Krishna, Krishna expands Purna Meva Vashishyate. Krishna expands million times. Still he is Krishna. He will lead everything but keep everything. Okay? This also we know. right? Like when we offer something to Krishna, he will definitely accept it. Definitely with, with, with our pure love and devotion and affection. Purna Sya, he will definitely take. This is again another example. So, so many examples. Please try to understand this concept very clearly. So then we will be able to, uh, this is God's power. Okay? He will eat everything, but he will keep everything because he can He can do anything through you, any of his senses. That portion we also we have already covered earlier. The illusory representation of completeness cannot fully satisfy us. This is all reflect on your experiences and incompleteness of your life. So this is again, these are all nothing but what? Sometimes suddenly certain things will happen and then the, the, this, is all, this is nothing but dead body burning, right? So certain things we, we might feel this is totally incomplete, but we might say it is incomplete, but according to Krishna's way, this it is it is over, and then that particular Jivatma is, is is ready to take up another birth. That's all. Okay, give me an example. How can the invocation of Sri Upanishad help us to make our lives complete? How? Anybody? Yes, Prabhu. Oh. This is my perspective. Uh, Krishna says in 15.7, Mamai Vamsa Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatanaha. So everybody is coming from his eternal fragmental pieces. So if he is complete, in one way we are also complete. So we don't feel incompleteness. At least on the theoretical level, and if we practice over time, it becomes a big yarn. 
Hmm. Anybody else practically? You say you are complete. Can you repeat the question? How can the invocation of Sri Upanishad, Sri Upanishad help us to make our lives come? Okay, the same we will see also. Ajit Prabhu, please go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Uh, I mean, my understanding, uh, just uh, in a practical sense, is it, it basically gives me a, a very clear idea that, okay, I came, I basically, whatever is existing is part and parcel of Krishna. So if I see in that way, it is basically, a, 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 you know, you know that Dwandas will be, will be basically taken care of. So one way of looking at that way is everything is Krishna and it will go back in, in Krishna. So the individuality of, of me is, is of no value. Okay. Okay. Nice. Anybody else? Today I oh, one more. Yeah. Ajit, I'm only around to me. Oh, you want somebody else to talk to me? Maybe I can. No, no. Go ahead. Somebody else can talk. I don't know. I'm, I was just thinking why Madhikji is very silent today. They are in Sunday afternoon mood or cooking mood. Uh, <laughs> work activities, second program. It's okay. Yeah, any, maybe Madhikji can talk. No, it's okay. I think. Okay. So, at least from the first Loka Prabhu, we can understand that a purport, we can understand Prabhupada is saying that it's the Satchit Ananda, all three aspects that we have to consider. Not just the Brahman feature, the Paramatma feature, but the personal feature of the Supreme Lord, the Bhagavan feature, right? And when we know that the Supreme Lord is the is completely the whole and complete, then uh, you know it gives us a confidence and faith that uh, you know whoever we are worshiping, whoever we are depending on, uh, is the right source, the right uh, source. You know that way we are also approaching a bona fide uh, path. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good, good, very nice. My my realization is, and yeah, okay. yeah, Prabhuji. So maybe I think uh, Prabhupada mentioned in the purport that you know, for everything, for our you know, um, maintenance, subsistence, subsistence, I think everything is, is there, and so we don't need to worry too much about you know that. Uh, so I think that that's how we can make our lives complete because I think day and night we just keep working for so many things, you know, and then keep running around. So maybe I think if we can just limit those efforts and just look in terms of the basic common needs, you know, uh, limit those and then maybe and more time, then we can make it more complete. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. as, as we have seen from, from the example, one of the slides you shared, I think when the baby, even before the baby is born, you know, the 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 supply of food was anyways there even after that the supply of food is arranged you know so so that way i think maybe things will be arranged you know, I think so we don't need to worry too much you know Correct. on those aspects of you know, the sustenance nice good what what i can also share is whatever we are getting is in total completeness like whatever is going to happen is going to definitely happen and it is perfect only because uh, everything is arranged in krishna's way so if it is going to happen that completeness or um, the wholesome <coughs> portion is is already there yeah, outwardly we may not be you know why this why that it is partial like that but actually whatever is supposed to get that is totally we have got it and uh, the, the, the planning is already there the planning is already perfect understanding then so, okay Prabhu, one one thing just to rephrase the words you know in in practical sense whatever is happening with us we have to accept it as, you know, there is Krishna's hands behind that. So, uh, you know, even if there is anything that is not happening as per our plan, it has to be understood that it is Krishna's plan. This is again another very nice, thanks, Trump. So again, another nice example. So long as we are attached to Krishna. So Prabhupada is giving some very nice practical examples. Until otherwise, our completeness is not there if you are not attached to Krishna. So similar to one example, if you have a big machine and you have a small screw, we might think, oh, the screw itself is complete, but the screw, it's, the use of the screw is not fully complete until otherwise it is attached to a particular machine. Right? 
so it has got a value so even though outwardly it might go the value is there but still value is being um, experienced or value is being uh, understood is when it is attached to a particular machine right so uh, until otherwise it is still remains a separate single entity right this is also very good way of understanding Prabhuji, one question actually which I keep here, keep getting, and I think that was covered in today's session. You know, in and I think that might be disturbing also sometimes. Is uh, I think my my daughter keeps asking, you know, and many times scriptures come. You know, the women are is three or less intelligent. So I think maybe they're very contradictory topic, but I think that keeps coming. And whenever this topic comes or this wording comes in the literature, you know, so I think. We don't have very clear reply. You know, when we say that Mata Saraswati, you know, we has the entire department of knowledge. You know, all all those things. You know, typically we say, but you know, these these things come. You know, then the our understanding. I mean, we don't have a very clear answer why this is repeatedly mentioned in most of the scriptures. You know, mm -hmm. and daughter asks, so we don't have a reply. You know, I don't have a specific reply to this kind of uh, wordings which come in scriptures. Okay. We will discuss I mean, we this offline also. Yeah, we yeah. can discuss offline also. Shastra Chakshusu, you know, personal application we can draw, right? If you're able to understand how do you make your life cells life more complete, the completeness of life is depending upon how do we attach ourselves to Krishna. Another way of seeing it is whatever knowledge we have, whatever uh, skill that we have, whatever ability that we have, whatever talent that we have, uh, if you don't uh, really align towards that completeness, that wholeness, then whatever we have is totally waste. Okay, so the completion is uh, perfect only if it is aligned towards that wholesome complete. That is also one way of understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the services in this world, social, political, communal, communal eternal, uh, even interplanetary, will remain incomplete and they doubt and complete. Okay, very nice. So I was just mentioning this. Services include whatever that we try to do. Okay, Shila Prabhupada, Gija, and the Bodhi Vaishnava. Prabhuji, yes. one question if yes. we have two more minutes. Prabhuji, uh, so in the in the purport also, you know, there is this mention of uh, human form is, uh, you know, we get the human form after the 84 lakh species. Right? I mean, I'm just reading the purport. Human form of life is a complete manifestation of consciousness of the living being and it is obtained after evolving through 84 lakh species of life in the Cycle of birth and death. Yes. Right. Yes. And uh, we also hear, you know, that Jalajanava um, Lakshani, Savara Lakshani, Sati. And there it says Chatur Lakshani Manusha, which means, we, you know, it talks about four lakh human species. How do we relate these two? You know, so if there are four lakh human species, um, you know, just, just, this question has come to my mind few times since it was mentioned in the purport. You know, if you can help me understand. Okay, so uh, this eighty-four lakh is divided into all the uh, lakshanis, like uh, yes. single cell animal, then two cell animal, correct, correct. like so that is there, and then yes. human form is also uh, four lakh different species. Yes. So right, it need not two ways of seeing it. Uh, one way is um, when it is not that. Uh, that human form is uh, you to achieve human form it is not that you have to go through all the 84 like uh, different types correct okay. it can jump it can have a uh, yes, yes. multiple jumps also similarly mm -hmm. within that subset also within that subset also it is not that it, it has to it has to keep on changing now within the subset also it can mm -hmm. just directly uh, be the next one immediately so it is not that or oh, within jalaja uh, within the uh, aquatics or within the aquatics is there a, is there a movement no not necessarily not necessary when i say not necessary there might be there but it is not mandatory okay um but out of those 84 <coughs> lakshani so four lakshani could be the human form it could come in succession it could come in a different sequence that is a different thing yeah. but four lakh human forms means that those many births 
in the human form are possible. Yes, there are many births in the human form are, birth, are possible. But not necessarily everybody has to undergo that for life. It's not necessary. But it will, it will definitely be there. In one lecture, Maharaj was mentioning during the barbaric age or the iron age, that human form of life was completely, it is human only, but a different, totally different one, like uh, uh, 10 feet height and then all a different uh, way, but that is still a human form of life. Yes. Even now also, no, when we go to one particular continent, the human form of life is different. Another uh, country, it is a different form of life, a different form of human form. But still, the human form, it is a different uh, human form. Okay. So that is all included. So between us and the neighboring country is different. Between us and the neighboring continent, it is different. So like that, it is different. So that is all included within that four lakh only. Okay. For example, for example, this uh, upper planetary portions also. Like we are in middle, the upper planetary portion they are also they they are also considered as kind of human human form human form, but that human form has got it. They'll have what is it? They'll have wings also. Somebody's somebody will have four hands. Somebody will have long hands. And if you go down in the atala vitala patala ratala, so they are also some kind of human form, which means two hands and two forms. But apart from the two hands and two forms, they will have something else also. Okay. Like for example, for example, in Rama, we have Kadamba. Kadamba had stomach, his hand, his thing, his mouth was near his stomach. So the, some some form, that's all. Okay. Thank you, Guru. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupad ki jai. Next week we'll continue. So next Saturday we'll have the uh, Bhakti Rasam the second part of the test, and then again we'll continue with the issue of mission. So at least uh, what the objective of this is, let's try to complete, we have finished lesson two, there are um, six, totally six lessons actually. So we will try to complete um, the next three, four sessions and then get going. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Just, just for next, yeah. or maybe next next week also, I'm not in Singapore. So I'll let you know. I'll, I'll drop sure, sure. Thank you, Prabhuji.